In this video, I'm going to explore the question of can VoIP, VOIP, take over and replace standard mobile calling and mobile SMS? So first, what is VoIP? VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. VoIP can actually provide you with a mobile number. And therefore, there is VoIP calling, VoIP messaging, and VoIP video. And you're using this technology in apps probably on a daily basis if you are using Signal and WhatsApp, Telegram, and Messenger. So uh, maybe we need a new acronym. Maybe it needs to change from a V to something else. We'll save that for another time. So let's begin the exploration and comparison of VoIP technology versus standard mobile. In one sense, VoIP is already winning the game because cellular calling and SMS is already on the decline, especially for international. So why would you make an international voice call, mobile call, when you can use Telegram or Signal or Messenger or WhatsApp, and you can do video calls, voice calls, messaging for free to anyone around the world that has a data connection? So in that sense, VoIP is clearly winning the game. Since VoIP is software-based, it also allows for more control and creative features such as group chats, AI answering services, call center routing. And while people like you and I, consumers, we adopted voice in mass using apps like Telegram, WhatsApp, and Signal over the last couple of years, these types of control and creative features are now pushing businesses to adopt a VoIP for call centers, sales organizations, and more at an even faster pace right now. Boost things even more for VoIP is that VoIP technology now allows you to make a phone call or send a message from a VoIP app to a standard line line or a mobile phone. And also the technology of the cellular networks is getting better and more networks around the world are becoming 4G, LTE, and 5G. And therefore uh, that limitation of poor speed on one end of the connection uh, is evaporating and in probably the next five years will be gone uh, even in third world countries. Another reason that VoIP may win the game is that traditional mobile voice and SMS are two of the weakest holes in cellular technology to begin with. So the tracking and hacking usually has to do with standard cellular calls and SMS. They can be obtruded on, they can be hacked, you can be tracked and therefore VoIP has some advantages in that area, and I'm going to cover those comparisons here in detail shortly. If you want to learn more about those security holes, you can watch my video on what is an IMSI catcher, DNS hijacking, SS7 hijacking in this video. I want to just focus primarily on the VoIP versus cellular comparison. So we've already established that VoIP clearly is a winner in terms of the app-to-app -app communications, like a signal to a signal, where it is free to do uh, calling, SMS and video all around the world, as long as you have a data connection. There's also a huge discount when calling or SMS from a VoIP app to a traditional mobile phone, or when you're calling a mobile phone somewhere around the world, it is a big discount. But the VoIP calling and video still has some disadvantages. So we're going to cover that now. Number one, VoIP calling or VoIP video needs speed in order to have a quality caller connection that is worth having. So you need a 4G, LTE, or 5G type connection on both ends of that connection in order to avoid garbled conversations or buffering of a video call. In the lower 48 states in the U.S., it's all 4G, LTE, 5G if you have a quality uh, cellular provider. And so you're fine there. But when you get outside of the US, you may have issues with 2G and 3G networks that are still in place for cellular, as well as their internet speeds may not be uh, up to speed, or uh, there may be Wi Fi routing or internet routing that may get in the way of having the necessary speed for you to have that quality type connection. Number two, VoIP messaging does not work for every bank and brokerage and email system or uh, every crypto platform. So uh, the latest stat that I've seen is that about 85% of any serious organization allows VoIP messaging for two-factor, but that 15% could impede you and you may end up needing to pay for a cellular voice and SMS type service anyways. 
just to be able to do the SMS verification. Number three, when a business uses VoIP technology, they have total control over the bandwidth coming from the internet service provider into their office or offices or to their remote employees. And therefore they have control over the quality of that VoIP experience. Unfortunately for these consumer type apps that you find on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, they are built more for the sort of migrant workers or very low income. These are people that are looking for just the cheapest way to message internationally or to make phone calls. And their priority is the lowest price possible. And quality may not have anything to do with their decision. It is purely based on price. So a lot of the VoIP apps today are based on this need for pure price. Number four is that one of the ways that these VoIP providers keep the prices low is that they provide little to no customer service. The customer service is typically provided via email or a web form. And I tested about four of these and each one took an average of around two days for them to respond if they responded at all. Number five, another way these VoIP providers keep the prices low is that they skimp on the infrastructure expense. So for example, if a VoIP provider has 100,000 users globally and they build a infrastructure that supports 1,000 simultaneous calls or video calls, they are just gonna hope that no more than 1,000 people try and use it at one time. And of course, the times you wanna use it is going to be Christmas, New Year's Eve, Chinese New Year, and once it gets over the thousand users, all thousand people and plus are going to have a bad experience. But you're buying it for price, not for quality. That's just the limitation. Number six, yet another way to save money on VoIP expenses is they don't encrypt your communication. So when you make that phone call or send a message, do a video call, it is possible for the VoIP provider not only to intercept that call and your messages or the video call, but it is possible for somebody to actually intercept, obtrude, and record that. So you want to make sure that if you're going to use one of these VoIP apps for security that is actually built for security and it has a proper level of encryption. Number seven, another weakness of VoIP is that you may need to pay for a cellular connection anyways for disaster recovery. So to give you an example is if you lose power in your home and VoIP is your only method for calling out and the internet service provider, the Wi-Fi is down, the router is not powered, then you don't have a method for calling out. If you have a cellular plan, then you have the cellular data. The cellular network's most likely going to be up and you can make that VoIP call, connection, video call, whatever you need to make. In the case of a landline, if you have one of those really old phones that does not require a uh, plug-in power, then the power is coming from the phone company itself. And you may want to have one of those really old phones just simply for disaster recovery somewhere in your home. And uh, because if you have a landline that requires the plug-in power to work, well, that's not going to work either. So that's going to be out. Number eight, another weakness of VoIP is that the typical consumer VoIP app does not have 911 calling. So 911 was developed well before mobile. If you're at home, you call 911, then the recipient at the emergency call center is going to see your address pop up on their screen. Even if you can't verbally tell them where you are because if you're injured for, for some reason, uh, they can dispatch somebody to that address because they know that you're calling from home at that fixed location. In the case of mobile, if they can't tell the emergency services verbally where they are, then at least emergency services have the ability to utilize GPS or a triangulation to get your location within a few hundred meters and can dispatch somebody out to help you. In the case of these really cheap VoIP apps, there is no 911 calling, and they most likely wouldn't even allow you to call it because the cheap voice apps can be spoofed, and they don't want people calling and spoofing their location, sending the police and ambulances everywhere uh, but where the emergencies really are. So. Um, that is a limitation of the majority of these voice apps. After all those negatives, you may be wondering how could VoIP ever replace traditional mobile voice and SMS? Well, technology is rapidly advancing and cellular networks around the world are dropping their 2G, 3G and migrating, transitioning to the 4G, LTE, 5G. In the next five or six years, we'll probably have 6G and beyond. So the speed limitation of both Wi-Fi and the cellular networks is rapidly decreasing. And not only do I think it's going to be a slow five to six year replacement 
of traditional mobile voice and SMS. But I also think landlines will go away over this time period as well. Because if you have the internet at home, you're already paying for that. Then if you can put a VoIP app on your desktop, your tablet, and your phone, then why even pay for something where you have to walk 30 feet, 40 feet in order to pick up a physical landline phone when you can just have it on all of your devices, all ringing at the same time, and pick up one that is already sitting in your lap or on the end table next to you. Just makes sense. And calling from Landlines International, for example, is a lot more expensive when you can just do a free VoIP call or VoIP video or message anyways. Now let's review the clear advantages of VoIP over mobile with number one being price. So if you're already using Signal, Telegram, WhatsApp, and others, then you already are aware that you can call, message, and video for free with anyone in the world as long as you both have a data connection. It is also a huge discount if you have a VoIP app that, that has the ability to call to landlines or a standard mobile phone. It is typically anywhere from a 60 to 95% discount over making a traditional cellular call for international. The second advantage of VoIP is portability. So not only if I have a VoIP app, not only can I take that app and move it from one device to the next, but since I'm in the mobile business, I have several smartphones, laptops, and tablets. I could actually put the VoIP app on every single one of them with the same phone number. And so when somebody were to call me or video call or text me, I can receive that on any one of these devices. I could literally turn a tablet into a phone or a, or a sort of landline. I could replace my landline with the tablet where I can not only make calls, but I can also do video calls. I can send and receive messages and use that tablet for everything that the tablet normally does. That is an advantage. The third advantage is voice quality. If you're a business, for example, you have complete control over the bandwidth and speed that you're paying for from the internet service provider. And also, if you find a quality VoIP provider who is invested in the infrastructure, then you will get that high quality call and experience that will be equal to a cellular call, possibly better. The fourth advantage for VoIP is the advanced features. If you are an individual that uses Signal, Telegram, WhatsApp, then of course you already know the nice features that offers. But if you're a business, it's clear cut, the uh, call routing features for call centers, customer support, sales teams is uh, something that they can't live without. But even if you run a small business or you're an individual business like an attorney, or a plumber, anyone who runs a business where people call you, then there are simple features that you can use, such as um, I could have the VoIP app for my business on all my devices. And let's say I have a virtual assistant in Philippines to take advantage of the cost reduction um, or have them support out of hours, or if I'm busy doing a job for somebody, I can't answer the call. They call me after the fourth or fifth ring, that virtual assistant picks up and this is free. It's over the internet. That's a huge advantage. The fifth advantage of VoIP over cellular and a clear winner is security. With VoIP, you have the ability to encrypt your video, your messaging, and your voice with TLS plus SRTP or ZRTP. And there's also custom encryption that's been developed for some of these very niche VoIP type applications for the government and others. And so this is a clear winner. And I just want to note that the cellular voice and SMS are the two weakest points of mobile and most prone to attacks, for example, like by an, a cell tower spoofer, such as an MZ catcher or a stingray. And again, if you want to learn more about the security hole, then go check out the video I did on what is an MZ catcher. The VoIP encryption also helps you with compliance standards, such as uh, standards required by uh, HIPAA, GDRP, SOC 3, Type 3, uh, the high-tech compliance, PCI compliance. There's probably more. I know that there's SEC regulations in terms of how anyone that's part of one of the SEC regulated entities has to communicate. So the VoIP applications can help you with compliance of these different regulations. The sixth advantage of VoIP is spam blocking. And because VoIP is software-based, it allows the VoIP provider to put in spam blocking rules and to use spam algorithms to determine what is spam for a message or a voice call, and therefore it can block that. The seventh item on the list is E911 or um, Enhanced 911. It's not a benefit or an advantage. It really just puts it on par with mobile. And it allows you, if the, if the 
VoIP provider has implemented E911, then it allows you through that app to uh, notify the emergency services recipient your location. The last advantage of VoIP is the business protection. So obviously VoIP has advantages for business in call routing features and all of that for call centers, but for business protection of their internal data, also for their customers' data, if a company were to standardize on a VoIP app that not only allows them to communicate internally, but also externally by calling outbound or messaging outbound. That means that within the employee base, when they communicate with each other with video calls, voice or messaging, it is 100% encrypted end to end. They're protecting their own data. They're protecting their customers' data. When they call outbound using VoIP or message outbound using VoIP to a high profile client, then at least that call or a message is encrypted on their end. So if it's a law firm, for example, Somebody could be sitting outside in their car with a cell tower spoofer to intercept phone calls and SMS messages, and therefore intruding on calls that they are making or messages that they are sending with high profile clients. This VoIP solution allows them to be secure and private and provide this advanced security that the traditional cellular service cannot provide. So after hearing all these advantages, you may be thinking, this sounds great. So what solution, what VoIP app, what mobile service do I use to apply this to myself or to my company in order to keep my mobile communication secure and you're in luck. Afani is a secure mobile service provider and we have two different mobile services, one called Safe. Safe allows you the choice of a top mobile operator in the US. We then lock out all the carriers, employees, their stores, third-party stores, call centers from having any access to your account. We remove your personal information from that account or your business information from that account. And it finally becomes your 7 by 24 customer support. We provide SIM security with 11 layers of verification so your mobile account can never get stolen away. Where a hacker would then reset passwords to your business email, your hosting accounts, your social media accounts, your crypto accounts, your business email. We lock that down and we back it up with a $5 million insurance policy. The second mobile plan that we sell is called Black Seal, and that is a data only Uber secure data mobile service where we have a cloud proxy service. We're inspecting every packet inbound and outbound to uh, detect and protect and defend against uh, MZ catchers, stingrays, SS7 attacks, DNS attacks, um, DDoS attacks, location tracking, that is all provided as part of that Black Seal mobile service. And it is delivered simply by a SIM card with no software that needs to be installed on a server or on your device. Funny is also launching our own secure VoIP app in the February timeframe. This VoIP app is gonna come with a second mobile number. That mobile number will be usable worldwide as long as you have a data connection, whether that's cellular or Wi-Fi. It's gonna be fully encrypted. So any of your, if you're a firm and you standardize this on this app, then all of your video calls, messaging and voice calls internally within the organization will be encrypted end to end. If you were to make uh, phone calls or send messages off net meeting to a mobile phone somewhere in the world, it will be encrypted from at least your end into our network. And then also if, for example, you're a law firm and you want completely encrypted communications with your high profile clients, you can then take this app, extend it, have them put it on their phone, their tablet, and then all of your communications with your VIP type clients are going to be encrypted 100% for video messaging and calls. For more information on the Afani Safe Plan, you can go to www.afani.com. If you want information on our Black Seal service, this is fairly new. You go to www.afani.com forward slash Black Seal is in one word. We also released a free tool to use if you want to check the vulnerability of your mobile number. People get shocked. They don't realize how much information has been attached to their mobile number. People are aware that that information is attached to their name or their social security number, but somebody doesn't even need to know you. They, if they get a hold of your mobile number, they can find everything they need to know about you. If you want to check to see what has been um, attributed to you, at least attributed to your mobile number, Go to our free tool, which is app, app.afani.com forward slash phone. You enter your mobile number, SMS verification to make sure that you are the owner of that mobile number. 
and within seconds, it's going to generate you a score and a mobile report where you're going to see that things like past jobs, past addresses, information about family members, has your mobile number ever been part of a data breach and more, you're going to be able to see that. If you watch the video to this point, then I appreciate you staying tuned in. Please like the video so that you can help promote this to other people who uh, may need to know this information. And also subscribe if you want to get updates on Afani products, on security threats, uh, news about mobile security, anything that's really mobile security related, we will continue to put content out. So thanks for listening. If you're a customer, thanks for being part of the a funny, secure mobile community.